think for a second what we are expecting the camera to do when we are operating in the autofocus mode. We are basically telling this device that of the entire scene that's unfolding in front of it, it needs to get us the focus of that one subject that we have in our mind that the camera has no idea of. It is a tall task and it cannot be done without some assistance and inputs from us. This is one of the biggest mistakes that we tend to make as beginners, which is treating the autofocus as an autonomous car, when in reality, it is an automatic car. Autofocus requires user inputs and decision making. And that is exactly what we're going to unpack in today's episode, where we will understand how autofocus works. And we will also see why there may be certain situations when it may not be working correctly for you. On that note, without further ado, let's begin. A super helpful on-field reference guide of today's session is linked in the description box below. Click to get your copy. However, I do recommend you watch the video till the end for the guide to make sense. There is one thing to keep in mind though, that autofocus is a two-part approach. One is the in-camera settings and the other is the on-field techniques, which is why I have divided this episode into two parts. So the first and foremost thing to accept is that in photography, wherever possible, whenever possible, we will be using the autofocus modes. And it's only under certain very special situations that we will move to the manual mode or in situations where the autofocus may not be able to deliver. And we will also see those situations in today's episode. So let's begin with the help of what I call the messenger theory. Now, in order to tell the camera where it needs to focus, we're going to take the help of some messengers. These are the same messengers that you will find on your viewfinder. And we get to choose the messengers that we want to engage with. Now, take a look at this scene. You will find a prominent plant, which is bigger, closer even on the left side of the frame, and a smaller owl, which is further behind to the right side. Now, my subject of interest is the owl. So I'm going to use the messengers on the right side of the frame to track the subject for me. So only those messengers are going to be active and they will try and get me the focus of the subject that I want rather than what is bigger, closer or more convenient for them. But there is an important point to keep in mind here that in order for these messengers to work properly and to be able to spot their subject, they need two things. They need adequate amount of light and they need sufficient contrast. Now, a DSLR will depend a little more on light and a mirrorless camera will depend a little more on contrast, but both these systems still need a good balance of both of these things. Which brings me to case one of when the autofocus systems may falter. These are situations of low light or low contrast, which means that the subject and the background are broadly of similar colors or tones. So now what happens if we deploy the messengers on one side of the frame, but there are more than one interesting subjects along its path? In such situations, the messengers are going to prioritize those subjects which are either closer or which have more contrast, basically subjects which are easier to spot. And hence, the autofocus systems struggle in busy scenes. This is our case number three, when we may get an incorrect focus. So now, as you would have guessed, these messengers are our AF points and different camera bodies have different number of AF points. Naturally, more the AF points, more is the flexibility and precision in focusing. And this is especially useful in dynamic scenes where there is a lot of movement. So the idea is to choose the AF point closest to the side of the frame where your subject is. And we do this using the joystick or the multi-selector button on the camera. Now that we have decided which messengers we want to engage with, we also get to decide how many messengers we need to get that focus. But remember, too many messengers may not always be a good thing because like the adage goes, too many cooks spoil the broth because we are engaging an incorrect number of messengers. Now, there will be some differences in terminologies and minor fluctuations in functionalities. But by and large, the underlying principle of how autofocus systems and autofocus area modes work remain largely the same. Now, the autofocus area mode is a very important decision to take on the field and it largely depends on the kind of subject and the degree of movement that you're anticipating on the field. So let's begin with option number one, where we employ a single messenger focusing oh. on the exact point where you want the focus to be. No confusion, no Chinese whispers. This is useful when the subject is stationary. This is a mode which is excellent for portraits where you want the focus to be precisely at the eye. 
It can also be used for architecture and landscape. But in certain situations where there is a lot of movement, you may need the help of more than one messengers to relay the information of the subject as it moves. Which brings me to option number two, where we will choose one primary messenger, but we will also use some backup messengers. So if your subject moves off the primary point, the backup messengers will keep the focus locked on the subject. And so the lost focus can be quickly regained. This is effectively a single point focus, but with some reinforcement. Now, the number of backup messengers can range from 9 to 21 to 53. This is best for smaller, faster moving subjects like birds in flight or a sprinting man. This is especially useful in wildlife photography or in sports photography, basically in situations where your subject has movement, but it is not predictable, it is erratic or zigzag. In my experience, the ideal team of these backup messengers ranges anywhere between 9 to 21 or 25. But I've also observed that anything more than that actually becomes counterproductive. If this analogy of messengers is making sense to you, then do not forget to like and subscribe and definitely leave your comments as well. Now coming to option number three, which is using a group of messengers. Now this is different from the previous case because here all the messengers are of equal stature and they work together as a unit. So effectively, this becomes like a single point focus, but of a larger area. So where is this helpful? Group AF becomes useful when you're tracking a bigger subject, let's say a car or an elephant. But this is not an option that I usually go for because even if you're tracking a big subject, chances are that you're point of interest is still going to be a small part of that big subject going to option four, which I've clubbed together as advanced settings. Now, this is closest to an autonomous car because they rely on algorithms which detect and track subjects. Now, different camera brands and bodies have their own technologies, but take a look at this table, which will give you a summary of these variations. Now, this is a feature which largely depends on your camera body. It depends on the kind of subjects that you're tracking. I don't usually use them, but if there are some techniques that are working very well for you, do drop in in the comments below. Now that we have decided the number of messengers, we've decided which messengers we engage with, comes another command that we give these messengers which is how long do we want to deploy them on the field. Basically, this is one of the first decisions that you have to make. Here you have two options. You can send the messengers out to track your subject once, report back, get your focus, and then completely forget about it. Case number two, as we send the messengers out in the field, we know there's going to be some movement. So we want the messengers to stay on the field and keep getting us information on the movement of the subject so that whatever shots we take, in that series will all turn out to be in focus. The first option is called AFS and the second one is called AFC. As the name suggests, it's autofocus continuous. If you have reached this far, please do not forget to like, do not forget to subscribe because there are a lot more videos coming your way where we break down photography to its absolute basics. Now, the AFS option is more useful when the scene is stationary, like if you're shooting architecture or landscapes or even portraiture. But AFC becomes important when there definitely is some movement in the scene. Now, both AFS and AFC modes can be combined with any of the autofocus area modes. But in order to use the dynamic modes, you need to be in the AFC mode because the dynamic modes require continuous tracking, continuous monitoring, which happens only in the AFC mode. And this brings me to point number five. It's because there is movement in the scene and you are continuing to focus in the AFS mode. But a small tip for you here. Personally, I have experienced that the problem that we face when we forget to switch the mode from an AFS to an AFC is far more than the benefit you get when you're shooting in the AFS mode, which is why this is what I do. I keep the camera on the AFC mode permanently and I forget about it. If there is no movement, if I'm shooting landscapes or architecture, I will shoot in the AFCS mode like we saw before rather than shooting in the AFS mode. This is something that works for me. It takes one decision making variable away from the entire process. Finally, there is one other mode which is the auto area AF. Here, the camera is the boss. It takes all the decisions and hence I've never felt comfortable using this mode. But remember one thing, not all messengers are created equal. Some messengers are more efficient than the others and they are called the cross type sensors. The rest are called line type sensors. Now, if we include this piece of information into this table, here is what we get. This tells us something very important. Because most of the cross type sensors, which are our efficient sensors, are concentrated towards the center of the frame, autofocus works better when the subject is at the center versus when it is towards the edges. 
And we're going to park this knowledge aside to learn a very, very important technique that we use many, many times on the field called the focus recompose technique. And we're going to cover this in part two of this video. But messengers too are not perfect. They will get confused in certain situations and these are outlined in the manual as well. Scenes with a lot of finer details or when the subject is dominated by regular geometric patterns. Scenes where the focus point contains areas of sharply contrasting brightness as is the case with backlit images or where the subject is half in shade. And scenes where there are objects that are larger than the subject and in these situations, as commander of your messengers, you need to step in and use the manual mode. Now that we've covered how focusing actually works, let's not forget that the actual moving parts which make this focusing happen live inside the lens, which is why the lens is a very, very important part of the autofocus system. The lens's maximum aperture dictates how many of these messengers are actually active. For instance, if you see the manual of the D500, you'll find that certain AF points become unavailable or less effective when the lens's aperture is smaller than a specified threshold. So basically, different lenses on the same camera body will function differently as far as the autofocus capabilities go. And each camera has its own unique set of algorithms and processors which determine how fast and how accurate it is to get you that focus. So autofocus actually depends on a lot of things. It's a combination of settings and techniques which is in your control, but it is also heavily dependent on the camera body and the lens. And all of these factors come together to help you nail that focus. So on that note, we have reached the end of today's episode. Do stay tuned for part two of this video where we will learn a lot of techniques on field which will help you get that perfect focus. Until then, take care. Bye.